哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒！哎呀 ，Wait a minute， 哒哒 ，OK，Hello、okay, everyone， 好、yeah. ，So we'll be having a video out video record lesson。Okay, forget about the spectacle. My eyes are too fabulous to miss. So, um, today we will be uh having a video lesson. Uh, if you have heard of any conspiracy theory about why this is a theory lesson, it is definitely not because that it is an early lesson, and Mr. Choi doesn't want to wake up early to give you the lights. It is not. It is not. Okay, it is just that we will have some variety. And、uh, because some of our classmate has brother, little brothers, or elder brother and sister that require the computer as well, so we will have a little bit of variety. It is definitely, definitely not because Mr. Choi want to sleep late. Okay,、uh, don't believe in that. If not, <laughs> okay.、Um, so anyway, today、uh, we will be focusing on、uh, talking about the worksheet twenty one point three, three. And、uh, we will then、uh, move on to the final homework, which is twenty one point four. After that, uh, then uh, yeah, we will do the last chapter of the entire syllabus,、um, and then、uh, we will be over the syllabus. Okay, so let's、uh, open up your worksheet twenty one point three, and、uh, we shall continue. Okay, twenty one point three. Let's take. Okay, so now we are at twenty one point three, and、uh, in today's video, we are going to finish up filling in the formal explanation on the various part of the DC motor. Then after that, we are going to look at some of the more difficult question in your twenty one point four, which is going to be your homework. So I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the homework so that you would not、uh, fall into the traps and all that. And I will also highlight to you what are the keywords that I'm looking for, so you can form. Form your own expressions when you answer the question. Okay, so for uh twenty one point three, we talk about how the DC motor work, and then we talk about two new components, the split ring commutator and the carbon brush, and how these two components actually facilitate the spinning of the DC motor. Okay, and uh very often, uh TYS would. Our、uh, or Cambridge O level will often ask you, uh, to explain how it work or how it relates to the, uh, to the to the working of the DC motor. So actually, this uh, filling in the blank or this structure of answering will help you answer some of their explain kind of question in the O level. Okay, so let's jump right into this. So first, we have the split ring commutator. If you forget what it is. So basically, uh, in a DC motor, there are these two half circle, which is being linked to the rest of the coil. So actually, this coil goes like that. And uh, of course, down here, this is the wire coil that will be spinning in between the two magnet. Okay, and uh, for for now, since we are talking about the、uh, split ring commutator, let's erase this. Uh, not that I I delete it, but it distract me from uh explaining the main point. So we have the split ring commutator, and then after that we will have uh some carbon brush, and uh that basically linked to the main circuit. So in the circuit, it it looks like that sometimes with a variable resistor here. There's plus and minus. So if the battery here is a plus, then we usually call this the positive brush, and this is the negative brush. And the positive brush will actually supply current going into your wire coil like that, and then it will go one round. It will come back. And you see now, I'm drawing it again. <sighs> okay, then it will go like that, come back out, and then in again. So if you have a magnet over here, then you can apply your Fleming FM rule and see how it rotate. So just remember, positive brush it means that the current is going into the paper. And then, if it is a negative brush, it means that the current is going out. So, 
uh, normally we will have a starting position if you take this as the starting position you can call it the zero degree and then uh, basically what will happen is that the thing will rotate and uh, when it rotate to the 90 degree position okay so we are measuring we, we are calling this the angle of rotation or angle of deflection because sometimes in your structure question you would want to refer to the uh, degree so at 90 degree then uh, the current will get cut off and uh, as it rotate continue to rotate in a, a singular direction then you will see that now the black color semicircle is touching the negative uh, brush and it means that the current would then be reversed so if you let uh, this process go on you will see that the speed ring commutator actually flips the car the direction of the current every 180 degree okay so of course we do not use the word flip uh, in our structure answer but instead we will use the word reverse okay uh, but uh, to be honest with you if you use flip i think we would close half a eye and accept it but uh, if you could then just use the correct term reverse ah. okay uh, reverse the direction of current and this is important you need to tell us how often do they reverse the direction of the current and in our case uh, with one split ring commutator is 180 degree what if there are multiple split ring commutator like for example there are multiple coin like this how often do they split uh, uh, do they reverse the current will it be 180 divided by 2 Okay, it really depends on how the question is asked uh, because if they are still referring to one coin then this particular set of speed ring commutator will only reverse the current for that coin 180 degree so even if you put multiple coin or multiple uh, speed ring commutator it is still reversing at every 180 degree it will not drop you see because you are having multiple coin for that particular coin the current reverse every 180 degree okay if you want to talk about the other coin then you see that the other coin they are isolated it, it it does not connect you see because even if there are multiple coin it is still being powered by the same main circuit meaning that uh, there's only one carbon brush right down here there's only one brush that links to the main circuit yeah so because of that even with multiple coin, the split ring commutator only reverse the direction every 180 degree. Then after that, you need to tell me uh, why is it necessary. So it actually ensures that the coil rotate continuously. This is one keyword and in one direction. Okay, and you have to uh, quantify your answer. It has to be a direct current supply because if you are not using a battery, that means uh, let's say you use uh, your socket uh, which give you an alternating current then the direction of the current flow will reverse by the source and then it won't work okay so the dc motor only works when you supply a direct current okay next we have the carbon brush uh, carbon brush is quite easy to understand let me see if i can uh, find a, a a picture for you carbon brush uh, DC moto. Let's see if you can see an actual picture from this. Uh, carbon brush. Let's see. Actually, this is the carbon brush. Okay. Uh, the spring will actually push the brush uh, into that split ring commutator. So as the split ring commutator is spinning, the brush will actually get corroded and uh, eroded, not corroded, eroded by the spinning action and therefore it will get shorter and shorter and the spring is supposed to push the brush so that it keeps the contact with uh, the spinning uh, split ring commutator yeah so yeah these are all the brush it's like a block of carbon but it, but uh, it's in in the early days when they first derived the uh, simple dc motor they basically use a brush which is like your broom okay so uh, that actually uh, keeps the contact point uh, between the uh, speed ring commutator. So in uh, exam, do not use SRC to represent speed ring commutator. 
we are doing that because we are making nodes okay between the split ring commutator and the circuit you can say the main circuit yeah uh, this brush will basically connect or close the circuit while allowing the coil to rotate continuously without entangling the wire so this is actually the main point okay why you cannot just solder on because you cannot have a fixed contact point you must let it rotate yep okay then down here explain why the wire coil spin continuously when a current pass through it um, so uh, this is like a four mark kind of question so first you must talk about the interaction of the field and then you need to talk about the moment because we talk about spinning so by talking about the interaction of the field you can explain and talk about the for the electromagnetic force that arises and then from the force you need to talk about the moment because in our syllabus as long as an object spin there must be a net moment okay so let's uh jump into this uh when a current passes through a wire then definitely a magnetic field will be produced uh, this magnetic field will keyword interact with the magnetic field of the permanent magnet or whatever the magnetic source in the context so if the context use an electromagnet then uh, change the word to electromagnet okay and by now you can quote your Fleming's left hand rule uh, because it can tell you the direction of the force so by Fleming's left hand rule apostrophe s uh, it will produce a electromagnetic force oh this one uh, because you are talking about Fleming's left hand rule right then you need to tell me the direction so actually down here you must tell me the direction so in this case uh, I do not have a context so I will just put a dummy direction in so after you talk about this then it will result in a net dummy direction okay and whenever we are talking about moment please make sure you have the right preposition behind it okay this is a fixed preposition that you need to have okay whenever you talk about moment it has to be about a certain axis or a certain pivot so uh from point one to point two basically we have addressed point a in the question but we have not talked about point b so therefore we need this to address why is it that it can be continuous in one direction so we need to talk about the split ring commutator which is here spell out the entire thing okay commutator reverse the direction of please remember it's not voltage it's the current okay and with that uh, that would be your 21.3 of course this is not uh, everything in your textbook in your textbook uh, you actually talk about the moment time graph it talks about ways to improve the efficiency of the motor which we have covered in the previous lesson at the uh, last video that i show you about having multiple coin about reducing the resistance about having a stronger electromagnet or a stronger magnet there are many ways so actually in your textbook there are many details inside and uh, basically you just need to read it to understand so i'm not covering it in uh, this video here so next we will go into 21.4 and then uh, that will be your homework and uh, uh, this video I will talk about some of the keywords that I expect to see or I will break down the question for you so that you have a clear picture on how to approach the question okay so please take out 21.4 now okay so this is 21.4 uh, I will not cover all the question but only the ones that are more tricky so many of you like to miss this kind of question whereby you need to sketch a field line 
So down here you are expected to only sketch one fill line and it's between AB inside and outside the solenoid. So I would expect if this is the solenoid and you have a point A and a point B here, I would expect something like this. Uh, please pass through the point B and then you must tell me the directions. Okay, so I will let you figure it out and try your best. Okay, for part B, um, go and read your textbook or actually we have already covered this. So part B, you should be able to uh, answer. For question two, it is a different kind of circuit breaker. Let me uh, just illustrate some of the key points. So what happened is that down here, it will be connected to a terminal and here will be connected to a terminal. So this could be a live wire or a live source. And then this live source will go through the circuit breaker and then down here it will be still live. And this is actually the uh, live wire or it will go into a socket uh, like, like this. And then there will be one here that is going to elsewhere. So when you plug it into your appliances, then the brown wire will actually connect to this entire thing. So that's how it works. Okay, so that is your terminals. Down here, you will also see this thing called a spring copper strip. So what it does is that uh, this is is compressed position, and uh, when it when when this armature goes here for some reason, which you need to figure out, then this catch here would be released, and your spring will pong out, come up like that, and then your armature will be like this. Okay, so because of that, down here, this is basically a contact point. So just now when I draw you the thing, right, if this is a live source, you can see actually the current goes like that, through the solenoid, not the core, onto the armature, then due to this contact point, goes through the spring copper strip to this terminal and out to the rest of the circuit in the home. Okay, so this circle here, this one, is a contact point. Yeah, so at normal operation current, then this yellow path would be the path that the current will flow. So at normal condition, will your solenoid turn into an electromagnet? Yes, yes, as long as there is a current flowing, there will be an accompanying magnetic field. And because it is in the shape of a solenoid, there will be a magnetic, uh, magnetic effect. I can't tell you the pole, I want you to figure out. Okay, so there will be pole A here and a pole B here. So with a pole A and a pole B, that armature will get induced magnetism and it will induce a opposite pole. And then a force of attraction will be there. It's just that, down here, because it is a spring-loaded copper strip, this spring-loaded copper strip will exert an upward force onto this catch, and because of that, it won't normally get released. So if the current is normal, the force of attraction between the armature and the solenoid will not be sufficient to overcome the resistive force coming from the catch. So that's why at normal current, the catch will stay there, the copper strip will hold everything in one piece and the armature cannot move. But when the current is very strong, suddenly, like there's a surge of strong current, then the electromagnetic effect will be strong enough to actually overcome the resistive force from the copper strip and your uh, armature will basically just get tongue attracted. And once it gets attracted, the catch will release the copper strip and then the contact will be broken okay so that is uh, essentially how it works uh, how do you express your thoughts i leave it to you so let's look at part a part a you are supposed to judge on the performance and you are supposed to uh, choose between iron and steel think about soft and hard magnetic material so whenever we are talking about performance we learn in your chapter one we are going to characterize it based on response time or responsiveness, sensitivity, 
range, cost, and what else? Oh, availability, whether it is easy to get or not. Okay, so whenever we talk about performance, you always break it down into these five points. But of course, some of these points will be irrelevant for a circuit breaker because most of these performance are relevant to thermometer, to measuring instrument and so on and so forth. So if you are talking about circuit breaker, we are interested in only some of these performance parameter. So I will let you choose. Just take note, there are only two lines. Do not over explain. Okay, if not, uh, this is a bad practice. Uh, I know that it is homework and you want to show what you understand is fine but at the same time you also need to uh, practice how do you gauge how much you should explain so in this case uh, like for example many of you in the previous homework you all talked about or oh, the current will actually align the domain of the core and turn the core into uh, electromagnet so you don't need to talk about alignment of domains uh, usually unless they are asking why it turns into an electromagnet in the case whereby you are just explaining how a uh, device work based on electromagnetism, you can just skip the part on aligning the domain and just say that, oh, it has uh, the, the current inside the solenoid will produce a strong magnetic field and that will magnetize the core. That is enough. You don't need to talk about alignment of domain. Okay, so uh, for part B, uh, basically they are asking you how it works and uh, I think I have elaborated on that at the beginning so I'm going to skip this I will leave you to uh, talk about how it works okay but don't need to talk about the alignment of domain okay for question three uh, again don't skip this question you are supposed to sketch the direction of force when you sketch the direction of force please take this as the starting point either you draw up down or you draw down up depending on your Fleming's left hand rule and of course, down here, there will be no force because the current and the magnetic field line are parallel. It's fine. I do not want to see floating arrows like that. It is always wrong to have floating arrows. Okay, so the rest, I leave it to you. Uh, so again, you have to... Oh, so in this case, uh, be very careful. Uh, there is no split ring commutator. Uh. Okay, so I will leave you to figure out why does it come to a stop in the vertical position. My hint to you is 21.2, your question 11b. Okay, remember the part whereby it spins clockwise and then after the vertical position it spins anti-clockwise and then it passes the vertical position and then it spins clockwise again. So ding ding dong dong ding ding dong dong, eventually what will happen? Okay, I leave it to you to try to explain. Down here, try your best to sketch, okay, and complete the circuit, okay. Um, this one, I leave it to you to talk about it also. Remember, a DC motor spins because of the interaction of the magnetic field. So if you are going to talk about the speed of rotation, it's definitely related to the amount of interaction of the field. If there is a huge interaction then there will be a huge moment and you will have high speed so always talk always relate back to the interaction of the fields okay then after that uh for your part three i think this one you know where it come from since uh we just finished it in this lesson okay please refer to your worksheet especially gautam and privy and ritika do not use your own way of explaining. It is long wintered and you are using many wrong terms. Okay, so refer to the worksheet. Learn how to explain concisely and using keyword. Okay, for part D, this one is for me to check whether you have referred to your textbook or not. So I'm not going to answer it here. Um, uh, you have three days to finish. So I will set the deadline uh, on this Friday at uh, 11.30 so Gautam I don't know what the heck you are doing um, please form a timetable and don't slack because if the, it's not just Gautam but uh, the rest of you as well um, basically this home-based learning thing is taking away the teacher's ability to actually monitor your revision 
So by the time we realize that you waste too much time, and if it is already in July, it will be too late. Okay, you only have one chance to do well in your O level. Um, I'm not saying that if you fail, then that's it. I myself fail my A level, but when I fail my A level, I regret like super duper regret and i do not want you to follow my first step of failing a major exam okay i took a longer road than many of my peers to 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 actually survive okay so i mean it is just a small sacrifice and i think that investment will give you a huge return okay so do your best have a timetable be resilient, okay, and then be disciplined to follow it, okay, and always seek consultation with your teacher. They are free now. Okay, with this, that's the end of the video lesson and uh, please start doing your work, okay? See you guys. Bye-bye.